Hello everybody, welcome. Today, Gummy Bears Robotics is pleased to present a complete guide on establishing a successful first LEGO League team. We understand that being new might be scary, but we're here to provide you with the essential knowledge and resources to make it a fun learning experience. Our agenda for today's presentation is constructed to give a comprehensive guide on how to create a first LEGO League team. We will begin by addressing the time commitments and price of the team, followed by the space requirements of the robot game. Next, we have a not so detailed explanation of the registration process. Then after that, we will delve into the first meetings your team will have and the coach's role in first. We will then jump into the net core components of FLL, the robot game, the engineering process and innovation project. And finally, we'll finish up with a slide full of useful links and materials. Time is a key factor in any experience. It is also key to the FLL experience, but the key is to plan it out ahead of the season. During the week, depending on the team, you can have multiple meetings varying in length. It is important to use meeting time wisely, as time together with the team is more valuable than you may think. Spend meeting times on things like team discussion, testing, and dry runs of your robot game, and innovation project presentation. And after the meeting, you should spend time at home or one-on-one -on -one time with coaches on things that you can do on your own, homework, or fine-tuning your work and anything else that can be done individually. Before you start the season, you want to plan out meeting times and length. It is important to find a time or times that everyone can benefit from the most. During the season, keep track of how much extra time you have and use this information to take up more or less work in the FLL team. This prevents burnout and helps the team flow smoothly. Creating and running an FLL team requires money, but the amount you spend is completely up to the team. But for the registration and game mat, you can expect to spend around $345. Then you need to buy Lego Spike Prime robots. One Spike Prime robot set costs around $600, and I personally recommend getting at least two sets for your team to use, build, and program with. You can buy these from LEGO, the first LEGO League dashboard, and other third-party vendors. The innovation project costs money as well. The main factor for cost in an innovation project is building prototypes. However, depending on your solution, online subscriptions and other fees may incur. Personally, my team has never spent more than $100 on building a prototype. It is important to track your team's spending in a spreadsheet or notebook. This will help keep everything organized. As you can see in this graph on the slide, my team put all of the things we spent money on on the left and all the costs on the right. This helped us track all of our money and helped out later when we divvied up the costs and other money topics like talking to the judge. The robot game table alone is 29 square feet, so your team needs to find a large open space that can accommodate the table and all the team members. Use room in the coaches or members' home that is heavily used. The team must also build or buy a table. We have linked the instructions on the last slide. If your team can't host because of the lack of space, asking a local library, high school team, or other first teams is a good option. The coaches are responsible for helping students learn and become smarter. Their job is to help organize meetings and logistics, as well as taking away any major obstacles, as stated on the first website. However, there are some requirements for a coach. A coach shouldn't give answers or code and build for the team. Instead, they should support learning and give feedback to the students. The bottom line of FLL is not to win, but it is to learn and it's the coach's responsibility to enforce that. Now, when your team meets together for the first time, there may be some questions on how to get started, and we're here to answer them. To start, first provides a team meeting guide, so your coaches and team members can read through it to get an insight on meetings. The meeting guide can be found online, and first updates it every year. Your team can go through this later, but for now, we have some tips. Firstly, this was covered in time, but we will say it again. 
Plan team meetings when all members are available. During your meetings, make sure to log everything in a notebook or slide. This is a valuable resource for viewing and keeping track of progress. This is an example of my team's meeting notes. We took notes on what developed during the meeting and key information. You should also take short breaks during meetings. Taking a break will help the team rest for a bit and is necessary for children. Lastly, participating in team building exercises is a good way to get to know each other and build teamwork and trust during the first couple of meetings. Now we're on to registering your team. First, you need to have an adult by you to do this. Go to the adult signup page or type in the link provided into your browser. After your adult finishes signing up, they need to log in by clicking the login button at the top of the first website page. Then your adult will have to go to the dashboard, which should pop up as soon as they log in. Now at the dashboard, there are a ton of things you can do like managing teams, creating new teams, registering youth members, and ordering stuff like game boards, mats, and robots. When starting a team, there are some robot materials you will need, just like I mentioned in cost. One is the LEGO Education Spike Prime Kit, which comes with the necessary motors, sensors, and parts to build your robots and attachments from. You also need a device that can run Spike Prime and a game board and table. Buying expansion kits will help give you more parts to build more attachments and bigger robots. The innovation project is another big part of FLL. Your team must follow the engineering design process to identify a problem according to the season's theme. Brainstorm solutions to that problem, do research in that field and reach out to experts and build or design a prototype solution. Then receive feedback and iterate on your design. This is an example of the design process from last year. Last year, the theme was to help out others explore the ocean and solve problems related to that. My team decided to help people who couldn't access the sea by making an app and reaching out to local ocean experts to spread our solution. Firstly, we identified the problem pertaining to the theme by choosing to help people who couldn't explore the ocean. Then we brainstormed solutions on our own version of Shark Tank, pitching ideas to each other. Next, we talked to experts at NOAA and the Seacoast Science Center to get information. After that, we designed a solution, the HIO app, and then brought it to our people in the community to get feedback, and we iterated our designs accordingly. Here are some additional materials for your team. We have linked them in the description of this video as well. Thanks for watching this video. If you have any questions, feel free to comment down below or reach us through our email at flgummybears at gmail.com. We are posting more videos in the future about everything from building your robot to the innovation project. So make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss out on anything we post.